Hey folks, and welcome back to another episode of Old Car Guy. Today, I'm talking about the five things I hate about my square body truck. So stay tuned. Now, before we get into this five things I hate about my square body truck, I want you to keep a couple things in mind. So the first thing is this is very subjective. There's not a whole lot of things I hate about this truck. I'm just going to go through a few little quirks thing and features, as Doug DeMira would say, uh, that I find on this truck to be something that needs improving and some of the things that I will actually be improving upon with this truck. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So on the outside, my biggest complaint really are these big honking white mirrors. Now granted they are stock to the truck when the truck was built new. My problem is, is that if I want to change them to the sport mirrors or to another style mirror, I'm going to have three big holes in the door. And how do you cover that up? That's just something that's bothering me. A lot of you guys in the comments are saying, time to change those mirrors. You got the truck lowered, you got the wheels on it. It looks really good. Time to get rid of the mirrors. Well, that's the problem I'm having with these mirrors is I hate to remove them. My best bet would be to find a chrome set of these camper style tow mirrors or whatever you want to call them to kind of just dress it up a little bit, get rid of that white. Maybe I'll take them off and paint them body color, let them blend in a little bit more. Number two, this tonneau cover. Granted, I think it's great to have that bed covered up uh, because it has come into play several times to keep things from the weather. My problem is the design of this specific model. Now, these snaps, every time you gotta go into it, you gotta undo the snaps the whole way along, roll it up, it's very flimsy. And even if I wanted to take it off, this is what I've got to deal with, is I've got all these little snap heads that are screwed into the body, so if I take those off, I'm gonna have all those screw heads all the way around the truck that are gonna be there. So they're gonna be holes, they're gonna eventually rust, which again, it's no big deal, the truck has rust. But I think maybe someday what I'll do is I'll remove this, I'll take those screw holes out, and I will put a hard shell cover, something that's a little bit easier to open and close and use for everyday use on this truck. Again, it may not be a big issue for you guys. Some like the tonneau cover, some don't. I think it just a little bit takes away from the style of the truck, but at the same time, it is practical. Uh, so I likely will keep it for now. And even if I do remove this one, I'll likely replace it with something else. Number three, you guys have heard me talk about the gas filler on this truck being so low that I've got to either kneel down or squat down when I'm pumping gas in it. Now with this thing only getting a roughly on average about 14 to 15 miles per gallon, I'm at the gas station quite a bit, so having that filler neck as low as it is does tend to be a little bit of an issue, but it is something that I can, you know, work around. The biggest problem that I have with it is the fact that the filler neck is so shallow that when you're pumping gas and the gas comes up the filler neck and, and stops your pump from pumping, it spews out all over the side of the truck. And again, the reason for that is because the filler neck goes in almost horizontal and then kind of dumps into the tank. I think the long and the short of it is, is that when GM was designing these they could have done with having that filler neck a few inches further up on the side of the box to help with that issue. Number four. Come on GM. When these things were brand new, those doors would not close very well. And I'm really not sure why, because there is venting on the side of the door here as well as here, which is supposed to allow that cabin pressure out when you slam these doors closed. My guess is it's just not vented properly. This door here on the passenger side tends to be a little bit more of an issue. Well, because I haven't got it adjusted yet from when we had them off. so. I still have to get this one adjusted. Like I said, not that big of a deal. It is something that can be fixed. And on the driver's side, as you can see, the body lines match 
pretty near perfectly and this door closes with a heck of a lot less effort. So yes, we can get that passenger side door to close properly and we will do that. Just as another one of those round to it projects that, you know, when we have some spare time and we need to get some video content, we'll get that looked after. Now finally on to number five, and number five is a little bit selfish of a reason why I hate this truck. Simply that it didn't come with any more features. Granted, it does have air conditioning, but why didn't it come with intermittent wipers? For a Scottsdale truck that's supposedly supposed to be dressed up a little bit, it has a little bit of wood grain in the dash over there, but that's it. Has air conditioning, that's it has the standard gauge package, that's it. I had to add the tack. I like to add intermittent wipers. I'm going to be adding a tilt steering column and I'm going to be adding cruise control. I can do without power windows and power door locks. That's not the end of the world. Because unlike a lot of today's new trucks, you can reach across and lock the door because these trucks in the 70s were basically a little bit smaller than what the new trucks are today. So basically that's it guys. There's the five things that I hate about my 1977 Chevy C10. Granted, it's just a bunch of piddly little stuff. It's all stuff that likely I can fix over time. Things that we can improve on. But at the end of the day, I really do love this truck. I'm so in love with this truck that I have been daily driving it ever since we got the engine and transmission back in it. and. I can't say enough about the way it rides, the way it handles, the power that it has. You know, ever since we put that new Quadrajet on there, or the rebuilt Quadrajet, I should say, uh, that has been like a miracle carburetor for this truck. And if you haven't seen that carburetor rebuild, I'm gonna put that link right here. You guys can go watch me mess up the rebuild uh, where I had to take it apart three times. Nevertheless, I'm so happy with this truck. I'm happy with the patina. Uh, it's all original paint except for the cab corners, rocker panels, and that new tailgate that I had to repaint. But again, other than that, I'm so happy with this truck. It gets thumbs up on the highway. I get waves everywhere I go. Every time I park it somewhere, there's always people gathering around to talk about the truck. Not that I don't like that, but sometimes when you're in a hurry, you just want to get to doing what you're doing. But you know what? I'll always take time to talk about Dale. So that is gonna do it for this video. Stay tuned for an upcoming video about the five things I absolutely love about my C10. The Car Guy and Six Fan Show is happening every Thursday evening at seven o'clock central, eight Eastern and nine local time. I share that responsibility with Grant Tommy, who is straight six fan. I'll put his link right here. Uh, we are just a bunch of car guys talking cars and we occasionally have guests on the show. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss out. Subscribe to me, subscribe to Grant, so you get the bell notifications when we go live, and enjoy the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again real soon.